Uh, we are in a brand new series called Relationship Revolution. And I know that the past couple of weeks, we all need to know where the greatest relationship is and is Lord Jesus. For the past couple of weeks, we already faced a couple shootings. We have faced a lot of crazy things in the world. We have faced uh, mental health issues. We have faced... Um, just things that can break someone's soul very easily. And I really do believe this, that the relationship, before we focus on the relationship with others, the most important relationship we need to focus on is with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to talk about how his life and his uh, lordship, his fathership over our lives would bring us from whatever we need to a place of rest solitude, and restoring. So we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Psalm 23. Um, and the reason why I love Psalms, just in general, is because they're books of poems and songs made from King David. And if you guys know King David, he actually plays two parts. He plays a king, but at first he was a shepherd boy. And he wrote songs when he became a king, when basically all the war is done. He, became, he wanted to kind of settle down. He was writing songs about the journey of his life. The journey that brought him from when he was a shepherd boy, when he, dis, when he killed Goliath, when he brought all the way um, to become the king, and even after that. So he has a lot of life uh, experience that came with it. And why I love it is because it's just so poetic. There's something that comes with his life and all of our lives that we can relate to because we came from, there's chaos in the world, but for some certain reason, he wants to talk about peace. And we're going to be talking about uh, Psalm 23, and, uh, and I love this psalm. I'm sure we talk about it all the time here at Pearlside, but I want to bring a different light to it. We're going to talk about how he's a shepherd but not only a shepherd, he also brings us to a place, or a good shepherd that leads us, but also brings us to a place where he gets to restore us, but also using the power to restore the world. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're going to go uh, read this psalm. Well, actually, before we read it, I want to do a little activity. Get, everyone, get out their phones. I'm sure all of us uh, live in the 21st century. <laughs> and we're going to write down, that comes into mind, the place that you like to rest at, where you feel the most comfortable, where the noise in the world doesn't bother you, where you can just sit down, drink a cup of coffee, drink some tea, or drink some water, and just not be bothered. Get a good book. I don't know if you guys read books nowadays, podcast. Uh, you gotta take a couple seconds to write it down. And then we'll go from there. Are we good? We all wrote, wrote down a place that uh, came to mind? Cool. So, Psalm 23, 1 to 6. Everyone, please, uh, actually, we're going to do this. Close your eyes, and we're going to imagine this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Church, join me as I pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for this psalm that you are the shepherd of our lives. And I pray that as we break down this text, that we can look at your promises, that we live in it, we accept it, but also we can tell the, these same promises to the world. So, Lord, we thank you, God. I pray that we will take that rest that we're going to be talking about tonight and live in it and live in victory. In Jesus' name, we all said, 
Amen and amen. The title of my message is On Repeat, The Lord is My Shepherd. So in Psalm 23, 1 to 6, King David writes about his relationship with God in the midst of everything that is going on in his life. One, remember, he was a shepherd and lived many years to become a king. And then after that, this is where he writes his psalm. And this moment of reflection reminds King David that God, and this is all the points in your notes. I'm going to read it down. King, uh, that re- this moment of reflection reminds King David that God promises to lead us to peace. Promises to provide our soul true rest and refreshment. Promises to protect and comfort us. And promises us an everlasting relationship. We're going to go back to the first point of, pro- of the promises to lead us to peace. It says this in verses 1 to 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You know, we can re- again, we can relate to King David because we all want this. In some shape or form, our soul craves this. At that David had a lot going on from being a king, a leader in the military, Yet God had to lead him to a place where he can find peace, an uninterrupted place where he can listen to God. And in the midst of everything that's going on in his life, this peace is what is going to remind him that God is the one that will bring everything, these promises, to pass. And now I'm going to ask everyone a question. What is our green pasture and the still waters in our life? Are we able to follow Jesus and follow God to this place of rest? But sometimes what we want to rest in isn't necessarily what we need to rest in. We hear this often where we want to hear the right things, but never uh, someone to tell us what we need to know. I'm sure we all have been to Target, and when we enter Target, um, Alyssa does this all the time. Uh, she walks into Target and tells me one thing that she needs, but for some reason comes out with many different things that she wanted. And I'm sure all of us can relate to this because we all been to Target and we buy uh, the snacks that was not supposed to be there. Um, maybe we buy some things that we thought we needed. Oh, this is going to make my life easier, but really it's just going to be more clump. That's a little bit of me too. I buy games and pop sockets and all this. Oh, not pop sockets. Pop bobbleheads and all this kind of stuff. And I actually leave without actually needing something. We treat these green pastures and still waters in something that actually doesn't necessarily fills us up to what we needed. But actually takes away from what, we actually, what, actually, what our soul really needs. We spend money on things that will just give us a temporary fulfillment. But then we never get to what our soul truly desires to find true rest. We have to remember the world says you will find peace when we get what we want. But the word says God will lead us to peace because of the need of our soul. So I ask you all of this, of where is your green pasture? Where is your still water? Are we going to allow God, are we going to allow ourselves to encounter Christ? Or are we going to be led to a place that the world is saying? Maybe sometimes we are led to the club to find our true rest. I'm not saying clubbing is bad. I'm saying the repercussions of things. Maybe drinking is something that we want, but not the place that we needed. Maybe to this past relationship. Man, maybe even just trying to say something. And I, I, I'm going to be venting to my friends so they can tell me something. But really, when I'm venting about this, I'm not getting what I need to know. I'm just letting them take my burden. But when I leave, I feel so much more frustrated. Maybe that's what we wanted but we needed a friend to tell us otherwise. When we get to this place, I'm sure we all have written down this activity where we can find our green pastures and the still waters. 
Are we finding Jesus Christ there? But when we accept this peace, and when he leads us, when we continue to be in the word, to lead, to, for him to lead us to the place where he needs to go, that's where we can find peace. It says this in verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. We talk about this, promises to provide our soul true rest and refreshment. Have you ever seen like a river that has just green, brown, dirty water? And I, I'm not going to say the olive oil, but I'm, I'm going to just say like the puddle that like it just is gross because of the rain from the yesterday. But it's just one still place. When we give out, when we help out a friend, when we love on someone, when we go to work, when we're hanging out, you may not know this, but your soul is actually giving your, some of you, uh, giving your pieces out. You're giving your pieces of your soul out. You're filling up, oh, I'm, at, I'm just trying to uh, work a regular job, but for some certain reason, uh, my friend has these problems. Okay, let me try to help guide them uh, through it. Oh, I'm going to my family's house and this family party. I went to a family party today. Let me, uh, let me just say it was a little stressful because I'm trying to figure things out. But then I had to help my aunties, my uncles, and help guide them to places and advice that uh, can take a lot out of me. I'm sure we all been to that places. We, when we give out, it act, we need a place for God to restore our true um, or our soul to the true place he wants us to be. That's why he says, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. It says in verse 1 and 2 that he actually makes us rest. If he makes us rest, rest in the place of righteousness, we can fulfill things or we can get the restoration that God wants for us. But then we need to get to a place where light can get in. Where water can pour into our soul. It can get out that muck and that dirt and the brown water and the green water. So it can be pure. That's what he talks about when he leads us in a, in a path of righteousness. When we begin to know where the true owner and author of peace is, we then begin to receive rest and refreshment. Spend time with the Lord in these times. And maybe you're here uh, for the first time and you're thinking, man, I don't even know God like that. Well, let me tell you this. He knows you and he knows what you truly need. Are we allowing ourselves to listen to that voice? And when we're talking about he, le he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When we read our word, when we pray intentionally, we cast our burdens onto him from that time. We seek direction where he tells us where to go. And we are reminded of what God has done in our lives. Aligning our hearts with his. It says this in Psalm 52, 12. Restore, me, restore to me the joy of your salvation, my salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. When was the last time you pondered the first time you encountered Jesus Christ? I still remember I grew up in um, kind of like a typical Filipino uh, household. Um, my family were uh, said, quote unquote, like Christian or Catholic. Uh, they said one thing, oh, I follow God, but then they'll do something different that doesn't align with God's heart. I'm not going to lie to you, it was pretty jaded because of that. So I grew up kind of um, making mistakes, trying to find my own way, trying to do my own thing. And my mom was just working all the time. I never had a father figure to lead me. So I was trying to find these things to fill up my soul, finding it in the wrong places. But then when I first encountered Jesus Christ, it was at Grace Bible Church, um, Pearlside. We are now called Pearlside. But it was at Leeward Community College. 
And I remember sitting down, um, well, the person that invited me told me that, oh, you're gonna, you just need to come, you just need to come. And I totally told this person, I don't want to come. This church thing is not for me. I think they're all hypocrites. I think uh, people think that I'm going to go to hell because of it, because of how bad I am. But this person was consistent, telling me that you're going to truly enjoy your walk with God. And so I gave in. But I told them I'm not going to any college or young adult service because, one, that's weird to me. I don't like people that my age. But funny, I'm preaching to people around my age. But anyways, that's a different story. I sat down at, Le- at LCC. It was in the morning services. You got some uncles and aunties. I felt right at home. And I sat down. And then after that, the pastor was preaching. And he said, I don't know who needs to hear this. But God is the father to the fatherless. And he loves you just the way you are. And I was sobbing. I was crying my eyes out. I was gallows everywhere, snot everywhere. I tried to wipe myself down. And I don't know why. But that was the very first time I felt like I was seen, I was loved, and I was heard. And it wasn't because someone was preaching the word. It was because the presence of God came and loved me where I was sitting. I didn't care who was the left of me or on the right of me. The cre- the, we have to remember the, what actually makes the green pasture and the still water wasn't a place, but it was the God that loved our pieces. And that's when I was talking about still waters. He loved me and he loves you. When was the last time you pondered on God's love for you? And he loves you immensely. When we're aligned with him, aligned with his heart, when we seek that time for to that moment where we encountered him, we're reminded in this place of rest that his righteousness will align us, which was love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, uh, generous, faithfulness, self-control, you name it. He aligns you right where where it goes. We have to remember that God loves us so much that he doesn't want our soul to be in pieces. But he wants to bring peace to our pieces. God loves us so much that he doesn't want our soul to be in pieces. But he wants to bring peace to our pieces. Amen. Amen. Are we tracking? Sorry, we're, we're over here uh, and thinking like this is going to be a rah, rah, rah type of message. But let me tell you, it's important to find rest. It's important to seek the Lord for refreshment. Why? Because if you find rest and refreshment somewhere else... The world is going to tell you that you can find it in all the wrong places. Just like what um, Pat was saying in the beginning. That was bars, by the way. When we find Jesus Christ and we put him right in the center, we will not be moved and shaken by the world. I don't work out. I try, I'm trying to right now. People are telling me to work out. But actually, the strongest thing in your body is your core. I don't have abs. If under the, you know, the Sikdurak and all this good things, it's there. But when you have a strong core, your body is able to maneuver and do well. That's like our spiritual walk. When our core, our relationship with God is healthy, everything else and the people around us will find that. That same kind of balance, that same kind of healthiness. That same kind of maneuvering, it all comes when we put Jesus Christ back in the center. So when you're unaligned, you're going to need to put God back. But now the question is, how are we going to be realigned? It's because the Lord, or how we put that is, is constantly, one, the word, intentional prayer, and a group of people that will keep you accountable. That's why small groups is important. 
That's why one-to-one -one is important. If you're here and in the, for the first, and because someone invited you, it wasn't because they want uh, you just to come and hear a preacher. They invited you because they want you to encounter Jesus Christ. And he loves you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God promises rest. We can say it one more time. We can say it one more time with kind of like emphasis. God promises rest. <laughs> Amen. Third point, it says this, prom God promises to protect and comfort us. In verse 4 to 5, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. There's three things that we can pull out from just from these verses that, just, uh, that King David was trying to get across. One, before King David was a king, I was talking about he was a shepherd boy. But how he was anointed was actually because of this oil. That's what he was talking about, how God has anointed him with oil. King Saul came looking for someone to take over as king. And he actually went through all the oldest brothers of uh, Dave, or David's brothers and saw him tending to sheep. And right then and there, he actually placed the oil on David. So what does that mean? It indicates that God has anointed his sons and daughters, his true chosen sons and daughters, that he will be with them every single step of the way. King David, as a shepherd, came and killed Goliath. And we can go into that story um, on another day. But David wasn't supposed to win that fight. All the odds were against him. But he knew where his true power came from. And that's how, he, um, that's how he conquered the trial that was in front of him. Because Jesus and God was there. He says this, that even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That indicates that we will face trials in this world. But because of that, God will still be there. Don't run away from trials. This generation finds a way to not, to find an easy way to get to the destination. And I'm challenging this status quo that I believe that trials actually makes us into a better person. And with God, it makes us just like Jesus. Do not run away from the trial. Because that's when we're going to see God show up. If you're in a trial right now, and I sensed it. I felt when I came and I was heavy hearted. And I know that when we feel and when we see the world right now, it just, we think that there's going to be more trials. And even in our personal lives, I can just, I know each and some stories that you guys are going through. There's some mean valleys. But I'm trying to say this, do not run away. Christ is there. And he's making you, and he's bringing you close. Sheep are dumb. Okay, well, what is, what, you're talking about sheep now. You just went from anointing oil, and you talk about plans of purpose, and now you're talking about sheep. He taught, the reason why I say that, one, David was a shepherd. And if God, and he's saying this, one, God is our shepherd. And if we are sheep, we're, I'm not saying we're more than sheep, okay? There's not much sheep in Hawaii, but I'm just saying this. You guys are more than sheep. But there's some actions that happens in our lives that we do personally that gets us into our own mess. That's just truth. And... Uh, God sometimes needs to bring us close. It says in the word that God uses the rod and the staff. And uh, I don't have a picture of it, but just imagine the staff and the rod. The staff is how God brings us close to his, us, close to us. But while the rod 
is there to shoo away whatever the enemy is throwing at us. And the reason why this is so powerful is because the shepherd is willing to give his life down for the sheep when things go wrong. And that is how Jesus Christ sees us. Not as someone who, go, who gets into trouble, but he, so precious enough that he will give his life and lay down his life so we can seek freedom and victory. God is there in the presence, but we need to pause and be there to encounter him. Amen. The last point is this. God promises us an everlasting relationship. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know about you, but this year has been pretty rough. And I know this for a fact that sometimes we look and we find and we're trying to find what works in our lives. But the house of the Lord and in the scripture and the last uh, verse, he's not talking about this house. But really he's actually talking about eternity. When we follow Jesus Christ, when we accept him as, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, he will align us back to the place where he has called us to be. As much as we will face trial and problems here on this earth, when we have Jesus, we have eternity in store and nothing will stop us from there. I truly believe that this generation, when we align our hearts to the Lord, we can see true power of the Lord in our lives, but also to share it with others. The reason why God wants us to be refreshed when we spend time with him, it's not just because we have, uh, or it's not because he wants us to feel good all the time. Or what, in context, he does want us to feel good. But we can't keep that power to ourselves. We are refreshed so we can be a refreshment to others. And there's power in that. There's other people that's dealing with mental health issues. There's people who are dealing with sickness. There's people who are in a lonely place right now. But I truly believe as a generation, when we put God back into the center, we will be able to bring people to this center. Amen.